Hi guys, bit of a different video for you today. Um, obviously, now we've finished the scenarios in Escape from Goblin Town. Fantastic Escape from Goblin Town box set, which I've really enjoyed. Both painting, I've got them all on display back here. Can't see very well because it's not really well lit at the moment. I'm hoping to get some proper spotlights. I've got a little diorama set up, basically, with all the dwarves surrounded by all the goblins in the uh, on the Goblin King's platform with his throne there. That uh, looks pretty cool, and it was a lot of fun. Me and the other half played played all the scenarios through. A lot of them, I did come away with it thinking, "Oh, I'd love to play that again now," just because I've got so much better idea of how I'm gonna uh, the tactics I'm gonna use and how I'm gonna achieve that objective. A uh, particular one I can remember is the Brothers in Arms one, where you had uh, Ori Dory. No, who was it? We had. Yeah, it was Ori, Dory, and Nori, and they had to search the platforms. Now, I made the mistake of letting the goblin scribe uh, sort of stick around, and the amount of goblins that came on the board after that was just crazy. <laughs> Every turn, just more and more were showing up, and it just became an absolutely impossible task. So next time, uh, we're going to start making an immediate run for that goblin scribe and even start uh, getting Ori to start chucking uh, stones with his slingshot uh, taking pot shots, see if we can get lucky so that'll be kind of interesting um, there was other ones as well where the good player lost that I would like to uh, try again that's the kind of funny thing I guess is that it's always tempting when the good player loses, you want to do it again because you want the good player to win really because let's face it, we're, we're kind of playing out these films and it's it's um, part of you really just wants the the right outcome to happen, to, to happen like it happened in the film so that's always kind of cool so what next though, now that I've finished all of the scenarios, we've finished playing all of the scenarios in the Escape from Goblin Town rulebook. So what I did was well, I went out to Games Workshop and picked up the main rulebook. Now in here there's basically a bunch more scenarios, as most of you probably know, with uh, various different participants in them. However, what kind of worked out as quite handy for me was I noticed that actually like a bunch of them use the Goblin Town uh, models, which is fantastic. This means I don't have to go out and spend like a bunch more money. So there's, yeah, I think there's three, three Goblin Town scenarios in here that all look really, really fun. Um, the only thing is, I'm really going to need to get to work on some terrain because you basically have to make a four by four Goblin Town board to play on, which will be awesome if I actually get around to doing it and I really would like to um, I was kind of thinking how could I get hold of lots of those the Goblin Town scenery that Games Workshop sells for reasonably cheap because it would be really expensive to just to just buy them at RRP but on the other hand I've seen some other people uh, doing some fantastic scratch built stuff with little like balsa wood uh, platforms and things that they've made so that would be kind of cool as well to just make my own and then you've got to make like kind of uh, rocky stack to lights and, and things sticking out up in the ground to give it like a good level because I mean it would be boring if it was all just flat on the ground it would be great to have uh, different levels to it but that would be really exciting uh, to do and I, I really want to do that but I thought I want to do something a bit different first of all I mean we spent quite a lot of time in Goblin Town now that's like uh, five, five battle reports I think it was five or six where we're all taking place in Goblin Town and I thought well it'd be nice to do something a bit different so at the same time I also picked up the trolls Bill Burt and Tom now I love these guys in the book I love these guys in the film and so I was really excited to get these models even though they're a little bit expensive that's actually what I kind of hoped this video was going to be about I was going to basically sit down and paint some trolls and just chat to you guys um, fortunately I did start, I started painting them. Where are you? And I did such a bad job 
I think I'm going to have to start again. <laughs> uh, yeah, it did not go to plan, unfortunately. What I tried to do was um, start with a dark base coat. So I went with, uh, was it Buckman's Flesh? Buckman's, Buckman's Glow? Uh, that one, anyway. And I just base coated them in that. Then I gave them a, a wash of Reckon Flesh Shade. And then I applied another coat of the Buckman's Glow. And they looked really, really, really dark. And it not at all how I wanted. And I was thinking, right, okay, so I need to lighten them up. Because if you look on the box, they've painted them very, very pale on the box. Not quite as pale as the Goblin Town stuff, but still kind of a, a pale flesh colour. So I was thinking, how can I brighten these up a bit? So I started basically dry brushing on various uh, flesh colours like um, Cadian flesh tones. I tried dry brushing that on and it looked awful. So then I tried um, dry brushing on uh, Rekarth flesh and it just looked worse. So then I gave it another coat, a wash again of regular flesh shades to try and tone it all down and it is a mess. They've come out awful. So I think to be honest as much as it pains me because I've already put a fair bit of time into these uh, they're going to have to go in Dettol. They're going to have to go in Dettol. We're going to strip them right back and we're going to start again because it would be a real shame to have uh, miniatures as good as these that you're not happy with. But I'm excited about playing the scenario. I think the scenario is really cool. I have heard it's a bit too biased towards the dwarves at the moment. Uh, the trolls actually have a really, really hard time of um, of doing enough to win the game. So maybe we'll have to tweak things a little bit. There is one thing I noticed as well. In the uh, main rule book, the profiles seem a bit mixed up. I don't know if any of you have noticed this, but it seems to me that Bill's okay, and then Bert and Tom have the wrong profiles. They seem to have got them confused in the film or something. I don't know whether it's just like a print error in, uh, on, on the part of Games Workshop, or whether it's like a late decision change from uh, Peter Jackson uh, to kind of change the characters. Because uh, in the film, if you remember, Tom is the one who Bilbo tries to sneak the knife out from. And he grabs behind this to grab his hanky, sticks it to his face, and, and basically blows his nose. He's also the guy that sneezes in the pot. And so you would assume he's the one with the rule lingering cold, which basically means he gobbles all over his enemies. And get they sort of get stuck or something, but instead it's actually Bert who's got that rule, so it doesn't really make sense, and it kind of describes Bert as being the the kind of weakest one that the others kind of pick on, but actually it's Tom in the film. So I think what I'm going to do is when I play uh, the scenarios, I'm going to switch their profiles round, which might get really confusing when I'm trying to like read out the books and having to think because you'll have to kind of keep making a mental note of who's who, because I'm going to still call them Bert and Tom, but different profiles. It's going to get weird. Anyway, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about was the film, Desolation of Smaug. Now, I imagine quite a lot of you have seen it. I'm really interested in hearing other people's views on it. Uh, I've seen kind of quite a lot of comments on the internet, and I did, must admit, I couldn't resist. I started reading spoilers and things uh, before I went to see the film. And I kind of, I'm pretty much in agreement with the general consensus, to be honest. I, I did really enjoy the film, I had a really good time watching it. But, like everyone else, there were parts of it that didn't sit right with me, or just scenes which you just kind of raise an eyebrow to and think, hmm, why did, why did they do that? Uh, stuff I liked. I really loved pretty much all of the first half of the film I would say. I thought it was nicely paced, it had some really good moments. Uh, the opening scene was a bit weird where you've got Gandalf and uh, meeting Thorin. It, it kind of could have been set up a little better I think rather than just diving straight in there into a flashback. Uh, I don't know, it seemed a bit strange to me. It would, have made, it would have made more sense to put that in Unexpected Journey maybe. And maybe that's something that, I guess the reason why they probably did it was 
so that you didn't necessarily have to have seen an unexpected journey. You could just go straight into Desolation of Smaug. That gives you the basis of the storyline in that scene, and then you're on your way. So I guess from that point of view, it, it, it's pretty good. And it was a good, it was a pretty good scene. I, I kind of enjoyed it. It was nice to see Brie again. Nice to see PJ's um, cameo there, which was kind of cool. Um, I liked. I love the dwarves. I just really love them. I think they're great. I, I, they don't get enough airtime. It's kind of disappointing how you when you watch the extended edition. I don't know if you guys have got the extended DVD. It's awesome. And you just get so much character from the the actors and the props and the costumes, the weapons, and then they go into so much detail with it all, and and talk about their characters, and you get the real sense of they're so unique. Every dwarf, it's amazing how they've done it. It's amazing how they've managed to take you know 13 generic characters in the book and turn them into very recognisable, iconic kind of characters. Really, really cool. But unfortunately, it comes across so much more in the making ofs uh, than it does in the film. You just like you really like. If I didn't know their characters from watching this, I wouldn't get across from the film. I think, and that's like one complaint I think people do have. That's probably legitimate. But from Pete Jackson's point of view, I think he's done a, an amazing job on, with a very difficult job um, in that. Um, I loved Bjorn's bear form. How cool was that when they get to the woods and there's that, you just have that hulking great big bear <laughs> terrorising them and then it chases them to the house. It's very, very cool. It looks amazing, fantastically animated and whatnot. Um, not quite so keen on his man form. It's, it's okay. I mean, I don't really. It just. It's definitely not how I imagined Bjorn would look, and so from that point of view, it's kind of like, mm, yeah, not really sure. Um, but I thought the guy who was playing him did a pretty good job. I liked he had kind of a slightly Scandinavian accent, which worked well. Again, not enough airtime though. It was like so quick. You think, oh wow, I thought this film was going to be really long, but within five minutes they said, see you later, Bjorn, and they were off on their way into Mirkwood. So. That was kind of disappointing. I thought they could have stuck around there longer, but maybe that's the sort of thing we'll get in the extended version. We can only hope that would be awesome if they have a nice uh, long bit of uh, beyond time. That would be cool. Mirkwood. When they got into the forest, I thought that was so cool when they're walking around, slowly getting kind of trippier and trippier, kind of more and more out of it. It was kind of cool. Are they going slightly mad? And Bilbo climbs out of the forest, and it just it, it just breathes that kind of fresh air, and he just looks out across and sees the lonely mountain. Oh, that, that really really cool scene, and the whole of the spider bits, the spiders looked great, really really creepy, horrible, and I think they did a great job where uh, Bilbo puts on the ring, and then he can hear them in their language, and I thought that was just dead cool, really cool. I loved the bit as well where you had. Bilbo attacking that, there seems to be, no one seems to actually know what it was, but it, it was kind of like some people are saying it's like a trapdoor spider, some people are saying it's like a centipede, I kind of, when I first saw it I thought it was like a baby spider or something, but the kind of impression I got was that it was this, this fairly innocent creature that just happens to be in the wrong place at the wrong time, and it's just like coming out to sort of have a look out of its hole or whatever to what the hell's going on here, and Bilbo just like freaks out because it goes near the ring and just kills it and just absolutely murders it starts hacking at it and it's like Bilbo, this kind of genteel character has just suddenly switched and he doesn't know why and then he sits there and, and suddenly feels you see him like feel really sick because he's just like you know what the hell was I just doing because he doesn't yet know but that's the corrupting power of the ring obviously affecting him which is uh, very very cool barrel scene. The barrel scene was so so cool I thought. I've got to be honest, I loved the bit with Bomber. I thought it was hilarious <laughs> and it looked just great. I love the idea that they've kind of, you kind of assume that he's the, the weakest of the bunch but actually he's just this total badass. <laughs> 
just works really well. Um, Bolg. Bolg was an interesting one. Mm, I wasn't that convinced, to be honest. I, I don't mind Azov. I think Azov was pretty good. But Bolg, I didn't really like him. I thought he just looked a bit too... Um, stupid. Azor kind of has this presence where he, he looks like a, a general, you know, he kind of, he looks commanding, uh, like a leader, but Bolg just kind of looked like an ape. He's just this kind of beast, I guess. And I guess that's okay. I just don't really like his design, to be honest. But he played his part. Um, when they got to Lake Town, I have to say, I kind of felt like Lake Town didn't look like Middle Earth to me. It looked very Dickensian. Someone said Stardust, which I thought was pretty spot on, reminded me of the film Stardust. And, you know, it was kind of good. This It looked like a good set, and Bard was a kind of a cool character. Um, you had Stephen Fry, obviously, who can do no wrong, because he's awesome. And Alfred was kind of cool. Though Alfred just kind of, he really reminded me of Wormtongue. So I guess he is to the master of Lake Town what Wormtongue was to Saruman, or to a certain extent Theoden, I guess. Um, and, yeah, it was all kind of cool, but it didn't feel very Middle Earth to me, unfortunately. But I still liked it. What I didn't like was the fact that they separated the dwarves. That was kind of disappointing. And you know, they seem like they should be a team. I guess they did two things. It kind of showed Thorin as a bit of a heartless bastard. Because <laughs> Keeley's there, desperate to get on the boat. And he's just like, no, nah, you're staying here. You're only going to slow us down, so you can stay here. I don't care that you've pledged yourself to me and come all this way along with me. Stay here. Stay here. So that was served its purpose, I suppose, if that's how they want to get Thorin across. It also worked in the way that now we've got people in Lake Town we really care about. Because we've only just met Bard, so I don't think Bard really counts. And obviously the mayor of Lake Town, or master of Lake Town, is horrible. Alfred's pretty horrible. And we don't know anything about the guards or the people who live there, really. So now we've got people in Lake Town who we care about. And so when we get to the end of the movie, which I won't spoil in case people haven't seen it yet, when we get to the end of the movie, there's a genuine kind of feeling of, oh crap, I don't want, I don't want <laughs> anything to happen to those guys. So I guess maybe that's why they did that as well. Now, alluding to Smaug there, I thought he looked fantastic. I don't think it really mattered that he had two or you know no four legs. <laughs> no four legs. I don't think it mattered that he had two legs instead of four. I kind of can see why they've done it to try and make it more anatomically correct because everything in Lord of the Rings uh, and The Hobbit so far has looked like, you know, it, it obviously it's a fantasy film but it could exist and nothing in nature exists with uh, arms and wings. Nothing. So it kind of makes sense that they did it that way, and I thought it looked great, the way he moved was great, um, Benedict Cumberbatch, uh, both his voice acting and his motion capture was just awesome, so you got no complaints from me there. I kind of liked the whole dwarves battling them, or battling Smaug, I thought it kind of worked pretty well really, I'd, I'd heard kind of people on the forums and things talking about it, and saying they didn't like it at all, but I thought it was kind of cool. I didn't like, I agree with people when they say they didn't like the gold effects. What the hell was with that? It seemed like it wasn't finished or something. It, did, it just did not, did not look right at all. And the bit with Thorin in the wheelbarrow, nah. <laughs> not, not a fan. And the big giant gold statue, no. So for me, the film started very strong, kind of the first half was all awesome, and then the second half was kind of half awesome, and then somewhat things I didn't really like or agree with. So overall, I did really enjoy the film, definitely, really enjoyed it. So anyway, that's been my first vlog, let me know if you like these kind of videos, 
Um, I thought they'd make a good filler, you know, in between scenario reports, because I'm hoping to be able to get these trolls uh, painted up properly this time, fairly soon. So hopefully it won't be too long before I do my next scenario report. And I kind of thought, yeah, these might be nice little vids to put in between to let you know what I'm up to. Because let's face it, this hobby is more than just rolling dice. There's so much time has to go into the building and the painting, and also just the financial uh, aspects of it as well. It's not it's not a hobby that lends itself to to just throwing down like a bunch of money and then getting everything you need. Because there's not much point. Because you have to kind of stagger things. You do one thing at a time. So at the moment, I'm kind of working on these trolls. Then I've got to try and think about maybe scenery because I'm, I'm not really happy with my board the board I use for the Goblin Town ones, it kind of worked okay for them because it's kind of big grey grey with bits of green on it, it looks pretty awful but for something like where the trolls are I really want it to be like a, a proper f lush kind of foresty type thing so I'm hoping to maybe work on getting some better terrain as well which would be cool but I think that's enough for now don't you? so let me know if you like these let me know if there's any scenarios you particularly would like to see, preferably out of this book. <laughs> and thanks for watching.